I agree with you, Brad. Uh, this is where I'm now uh, going uh, with my next tests. And um, this is basically two uh, shaded pole motors, very special shaded pole motors, I'll show you why in a second, that I have cut and all by hand, hand tools, uh, have reshaped the cores to fit on this motor and basically with its, uh, the motor's uh, activated coils, basically these two outer coils here on this side and these two on the other side where the beginning and ends of the magnets used to be. This is a uh, rotor out of a permanent uh, magnet motor and uh, I have a few of these so I can test the torque of them uh, just off the shelf and then test the torque on them uh, in this configuration or use this one here to spin the other one so it's uh, going to be a very good and valid test now um, I'll take it apart here and show you this is all done by hand and these uh, fine filing and all that all again by hand so you've got about uh, eight hours of work to get a core to this level and uh, the reason why I'm saying this is a very interesting uh, shaded pole motor is if you look there's a second coil right here and I found that interesting I've never seen that before on the shaded pole uh, motor and I was thinking wow that would be good for if I wanted to uh, use that as a trigger coil the wire is a little fine on this, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to start with certain kind of tests with this, and uh, maybe the rotor will be the primary, and these will be the secondary uh, driving coils or whatever. But we can definitely go into a bucking configuration with this as well, because these two coils could also be the activated uh, coils if they're maybe rewound, and uh, basically you can have a bucking between these two and this it could actually be the uh, flyback collection anyways there's infinite uh, combinations that can be done with this and it's really neat to have these uh, secondary uh, coils here that could uh, actually activate a, uh, a transistor or a MOSFET so that's where I'm going uh, next thanks bye